What's happening, everybody? What's going on today? Friday. <clears throat> Let's see what's happening in the old uh, spot market today, right? We'll check it out, see what's going on. And, uh, yeah, so we got everything, <clears throat> everything set up working, I guess. We'll find out. People come in here. What's up, RD Trucking? First, you are. I believe you are first. Big Face Trucker, what's going on? Yo, Spooby, what's happening? Um, yeah, so let's let's get into this and uh, let's see what uh, what we have shaken, right? What's up, Slow Ride? Philip, what's going on? All right, so Simplify, what's happening? All right, so we'll look at this uh, load availability map real quick, and uh, let's see what's happening. <clears throat> Show you the money. What's up, Lenny? What's going on? Weird racing. All right, so here we are. Here's the load availability map. Now, if you look at the load availability map from yesterday, we have some changes, right? We've got some changes. We have Minnesota turned from red to orange. Kentucky went from red to orange. Then over on the East Coast, we've had Maryland and Connecticut. They went from blue to orange. So they're starting to look better than what they did yesterday, right? Because they're going to the different uh, shade of color there on the availability map. So what we're going to do here on Fridays, I think we're going to mix it up on Fridays. Fridays, you know, we'll do this. But if anybody wants to call in, just call in the number. We'll turn it into a uh, Friday free-for-all call-in show, right? And uh, Semper Fi is all mad. He's, he's got that truck in blues. You know, think positive, man. Think positive. Shake it off. Shake it off, man. We all been there. You know, six-hour wait at Nestle Prina. What's happened? You know how it is. None of these shippers and receivers... Give one you-know-what about the truck driver. They don't. Not one of them. Why? Because they're human beings in there running the show. And they get paid by the hour. They don't care. They don't care if you sit out there all day. Because they're getting paid by the hour. See, they don't think about that. See, they don't stop and think what that is. So to put it back on them, when you when you go in there, instead of getting real mad, right, instead of getting real mad and you see these guys throwing, you know, fits and everything else, <clears throat> be nice and polite to the lady or, or gentleman that's behind that sometimes, you know, bulletproof glass, uh, <laughs> sometimes plexiglass windows or whatever, right? Be nice to them say, um, you know, I've been here six hours. Uh, I just, you know, want to know... Uh, you know, how much longer, and that they say something, then you say, can I ask you uh, your opinion on something? You know, be real nice. They say, yes. Yeah. Say, how would you feel if you came in here to Perina and you sat here at that desk doing your job for six hours for no pay? How would you feel? Because, as you know, your pay won't start until we say it starts. And they'd say, well, I wouldn't do it. I'd say, well, then how come you expect me to sit here for no pay? You know, because they don't even realize it. So make them realize it, right? Make them think about it. Just be real nice. Say, hey, how would you feel if you came into work and after six hours, you know, they come up to you and send you an email saying, ah, in another hour, we'll start paying you. Yeah, just think about it. All right. <laughs> it's been like that forever in trucking. Uh, right, folks? We're all there. What's up, Enoch? What's going on? Good morning from Facebook. Outbound, Michigan, 374. So it's close to 400 to 334, right? Right, Philip. Some still won't care. But, you know, you might get one of those that might just think about that. And it might change the way they do things, right? 
It could be a it could be a mom and pop place. The bigger ones, probably not going to care, right? Probably not going to care. But you got to keep a positive attitude, or else it's just going to drive you crazy, and you know you're going to get mad and stuff like that. And most people, when they get mad, they take it out on things they shouldn't take it out on, i.e., their equipment. Uh, in New York, looking all right. Pennsylvania, looking good. Yeah, these red states are looking good. Florida flip flop back. Um, Texas, 50-50, right? All right. So let's get into it. We had the uh, phone lines fixed, um, so that's good. Don't be scared to call in, right? Don't be don't be afraid. All right. So we hit this button. We have fine loads, and. Uh, there is more money to be made the next day. That's right. You can always look at the positive, right? You can always look at the positive in it. Let's see here. Let's go to... Uh, let's start out <clears throat> down south. Let's start out in Atlanta. In Atlanta, Georgia trailer type we're going to pick van and uh, we're going to hit the button and so we'll shrink this up over here so we all can see it we'll make it yeah about that big if you got a squint squint right we'll make it about that big right there yeah maybe a little bigger How's that, folks? Can you read it? What's up, Mecca? What's going on? Michael Page, how does a preventable accident from your company, no ticket from DOT or troopers, affect your record being able to move a company like yours? No other uh, vehicles involved uh, black ice. Well, Mike, here's what happens, right? <clears throat> you can apply, right? Apply. Um, we always ask you know, what, what the circumstances were, we take that in, into an account. And, um, you know, it's not your, if it's not your fault, and it's a non-preventable, because some companies um, have really strict guidelines of what they say is a preventable, which really isn't, um, but that's the way they do it, then, you know, we send that to the insurance company, they come back, uh, rates are good, uh, you know, we put you on because everybody has, uh, you know, accidents once in a while, right? I mean, that's why it's called an accident. Uh, you can't see black ice. You can't see it. Uh, it's really not a preventable. You don't know what's there. I mean, how do you, how do you, you know, you could go slow and still hit it and, and not uh, fare very well on black ice. So... I would, I, you know, we're not going to put that company that you're talking about up there, but you can if you want. It's, you know, you can throw it up there on the board if you want to talk about it. You know, if you want to share your knowledge of what company's doing that to you, um, but that could be in their policy, right? That could be in their policy, and then another company could have a different policy. That's why when you apply to different companies and you have a preventable accident, it depends on what it is, right? Some companies will say that's a seven-year violation. They won't touch you for seven years. Other company might say it's three years for them. Other company might say five. Other company might say it's one. Every company is different, right? Because I know um, some companies I was at in the past, a seven year wasn't a seven year. Other companies, it was only a two year, right? So it's just different. Light Bright, what's going on, Light Bright? Uh, quick what's going on all right so here we are we are going to you know uh, somebody said show them the money so let's see if there's any money to show might not be any money to show on a friday but we're down in atlanta right right snore lord here, here's exa uh, an example <clears throat> snore lord makes a good point always be honest when you're filling an application you know why because the the company's going to find out. You cannot hide it, right? See, for example, if you were in an accident, let's say, in your car, 
You had no ticket. Didn't get nothing from it. So, and it's not on your driver record. And you say, no, don't have no accidents. Guess what? There's another record out there, folks. You don't know it. You might not know it. But insurance company records, they all share them. It's a database. It's there, right? So when the one insurance company, you know, the the carrier's insurance company runs that record, yes, it doesn't show up on your MVR. But when they look at the insurance records, it's there. It's there. So it does come up. comes up. Even though you don't know it, it comes up. You know what I'm saying? What's up, Mike? What's going on, man? Get that RV out. Do some uh, winter camping. <laughs> don't take a load. <laughs> Mechanicsburg, PA. Are you still sitting there? You know what? If you don't get loaded until Monday... You know, at least you got a good 34 in. You know, more like 48, 72, you know what I'm saying. Somebody took this $300 load. No longer available. Here's 600 bucks. Morrow, Georgia to Tennessee. 314 a mile. Um, these are all in February. February 3rd, right? We're on Monday stuff here. Uh, you know, not looking too bad. South Carolina, North Carolina, 250 a mile. Let's just click on this beach island, right? We all know it's probably a Procter & Gamble load or something, right? Because beach island's there. There's all kinds of paper products there, you know what I'm saying? Um, it is slightly above $0.07 cents in South Kakalaki, right? $0.07. Cents. Uh, we scroll on down. $1,600 down to Florida. Go to the Sunshine State. See how it is. Hey, bud, what's up? Rusty Maynard, what's up, buddy? Um, hope the Volvo is treating you well. Hope you're enjoying the nice dry air out in Arizona, right? You know what I'm saying? Winter camping, says Michael Dow. 60s and 70 degree over the next few days. Hey, Mike, what do you think? You coming? You, you thinking about coming over to light trucking uh, sometime in the near future? What do you think, Michael Dow? Dow Brothers. Um, Let's scroll on down, right? That was a little bit above, right here. 18 cents, 234 is the posted rate, average is 216, right? Average 216. We got a message here. What is it? Let me check the messages. All right. Well, Mike, call in. Maybe we'll talk about that. Tell us how. Tell us how the '60s and '70s feel. All right. So, what's up, Jose? Sixteen degrees. You're cold, Mike. You're cold, man. All right. So we slide on down here. Fifteen hundred dollars. Alabama to Pompano Beach. Florida, I would not go there for that. I'd want more than that. I'd even want more than the 227 because, man, you're going way down in Florida. You're going way down. All right, 1,500, 1,500. Let's get out of Atlanta. Let's slide over to Houston, Texas. Um, You know, well, let's not do that. We haven't been to Baton Rouge, Louisiana in a long time. What's up, James G? What's happening? Haven't got a call back yet, James. I left a voicemail. Right, for them. Uh, Maybe they'll call me today. Um, If you want to give it a shot, see if he's in, you know, you're more than welcome to call him too. Okay, Louisiana, Kansas, um, right top load. Let's see what it does. 242 a mile. The 76 above the last two weeks average of 167 they're paying 242 a mile what does that do for the contractor owner operator it gives them a 1331 dollar and 51 cent profit after fuel and the six dollar toll 202 a mile for the miles after all expenses that's net and if you are on with a uh, land star let's say at 35 percent 
you're down to 771 and 51 a dollar 17 a mile and if you're on with a 20 percent company you're at a thousand eleven for that load for a day's run a um, dollar 53 a mile for the miles right right what's a good down payment for a brand new cascadia with a 700 credit score that depends depends sometimes you get them zero down sometimes they want 10 percent Sometimes you get 5%, right? You get 5%, you're on, you know, 7 grand, 10%, 14, 15 grand, right? Uh, just depends on uh, how many trucks they got in there, how they want to move it, and what the credit score really looks like. And if you had corporate credit before, that makes a big, big difference, too. All right, so we slide on down the uh, Bow, Bow Bridge. To Mount Pleasant, Texas, dollar seventy-six. That is going to be a penny below the average, folks. Penny below. Bam. We're getting into the Dow territory, right? The Dow territory. Seventeen hundred dollars out of Louisiana, back to Winchester, Virginia, and that's a dollar sixty-five. Seventeen hundred bucks. You're nineteen cents below at the dollar sixty-five, right? All right, so. Let's get out of Baton Rouge, and let's slide over to San Antonio, Texas, right, where the RV show, USA, Alan Warren, the wingman, does his uh, broadcast. Mike watches that show um, religiously, right? Um, it's a great show, right, Mike? It's a good show. Alan and Katie and, and the folks over there are nice, are great people, right? Great people. All right. So, twenty three hundred bucks. Chop tank hits the top of the board out of Laredo, Texas, to Villarica, Georgia. That is above. That's thirty four cents above the two week average. Two oh four, forty one thousand pounds. Profit calculator. Let's break it out, right? Eighteen hundred sixty dollars and fifty cents. A dollar sixty-five after the fuel. That's the net, folks. That's that's good money. That's good money out of that area because you're over two bucks a mile. You're thirty thirty something cents above the two-week average. Looking good out of Laredo, right? Looking good, out of Laredo. And you could click at, you could click on the uh, mileage maps and tolls and hit the PC miler, and boy, you're going to be off to the races. And you're going to see that route sh staying nice and warm. You might get rained on, but you know, you're not going to see the snow and ice. So it'd be a nice ride, right? Roll the window down, put on your music. If you're old like me, you you know you got country or you got '80s music or something going on. Um, because the new music today, who knows where that's at? Snorlord, what do you think about that, Snorlord? Um, all right, we're gonna slide on over to let, let's stop in let's stop in Phoenix, okay? Let's just do it. Let's just stop in Phoenix. Let's go see old Rusty Maynard and <clears throat> see what he's running out of Phoenix, Arizona. Right? Oh, there is a good pilot. Yes, you're right, Michael Dow. You are correct. All right, so here's the Phoenix stuff. And, I, and I'm going to click on these two little arrows to see if that dollar 32 is Okay, here we go. So you can go from Arizona to Henderson, Nevada, still for over $2 a mile. You click on this load, and let's see what happens. It's a little below. They're 23 cents below because it's a blue state, right? You see it was a blue state on the map. Um so they are slightly below, but you can always negotiate, right? Eddie says, I have a job for you. Of course, you have to go through the interview process. All right, Snorlord, no problem, no problem. Thor, what's going on? What's going on, Thor? Good morning. Glad, for you. happy to see you join us, right? Coming on in here. Uh, no problem, Eddie. I'll throw that app in. Let, let's talk about it, right? Let's talk about it. <laughs> we go to Las Vegas. 
You can spend all that money, right? Put it in the, the one arm bandit. Well, really, they're not really one arm bandits no more. They're all automated click, kind of like the click and go system on the on the slot machines, right? Oh, Russ, look at this. Buck 20 back to California. Whew. <laughs> it's actually two cents above the 14 day average, right? Oh, man. Russ, how about we go over and see uh, Scott and Willie in the gang, right? How about if we just go to Carlsbad? Let's skip over. Let's see a deadhead over into California, man, and uh, take one of these 516 loads instead. Ooh, there's a three penny fifty $50 job. Did you see that one? Right? So let's go to California and look at this. In the L.A. Basin. 33 miles gets you 300 bucks, and you could probably talk them up a little bit. 450 for 84 miles, right? We go right here to the $1,100 load. Let's check it out. San Diego up to Patterson, 422 miles, folks, and it is 47 cents above the two-week average of 261. You're going to get... At 17,000 pounds, so you're not going to have to worry about any hills or anything like that, right? Yeah, John, that was probably a partial or something. Or <clears throat> they forgot the zero, right? They might have forgot the zero. Should have been 500, you know. It is technology, so whatever you put in there, right? 873 would be the, the net after fuel, 207 a mile. Right? Not bad. Not bad. Staying in the state. Looking pretty good. 800, 254 miles. 2,600 to go up to Yakima, Washington. That is 21 cents above the two-week average. No longer available, folks. Look. That load didn't last long at 800 bucks. Didn't last long. Come down here to 900. Long Beach to Sacramento, twenty-one fifty. If you want to go to Portland, Oregon, right? Going up there to the big old TA in Portland. That is three cents above. They're saying four, but you know, who's counting? So there you go, Jeff. I've outgrown the orange IC box and looking to move on like you and Snorlord did. Suggestions? Uh, where do you live? Where do you live, Mr. Rod Lee One? Where do you live? Give us give us a uh, a state. Throw that state up there. Let us know where you live. Austin, Texas. We do have Texas Interstate. We do hire in Texas. So, depending on your record and all that, you can, you know, you can apply here too if you want. Hold on a minute. What's up, Al? Good morning. What's happening? Doing good. We're live, but you're not on. You're not. You're not on. You're not on there. I got, don't have you on speaker. I said you're live on YouTube, but you're not on speaker. Okay. Oh, the yeah. And what broker was that? Yeah, I gotta wait. Yeah, I have to wait until and add it in there. What you know? Because when you 
If you call them, yeah. Yeah, I, I can't log in there either. Yeah, that's just a... Yeah, you got to call them. Yeah, that's just a, um, a email they send every day. Yeah, you got to call them. Yeah. All right, Al. Bye. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I'll call about the email I sent out. Uh, broker sends. We've got a lot of brokers that send emails with available loads, so then I just forward them on, right? Forward them on. So, um, you said, uh, what is an average down payment? For a full maintenance lease. Usually on a full maintenance lease, what they do is they want uh, last month and first month up front. So if your lease is 2000 bucks, they're going to want four. If it's 1500 they're going to want three, right? Simple terms like that. All right, so we're out of California. And we're going to slide on over to... <clears throat> Des Moines, Iowa. Let's go all the way to Des Moines. See what's see what's cracking, right? As James would say. Let's see what's cracking out of Des Moines, Iowa. Four hundred five a mile, Minnesota to Minnesota. Two fifty nine, Nebraska to Iowa. Two fifty four, two forty three. 232 down to Oklahoma out of Nebraska. Let's see how close that is to the two-week average. It is 33 cents above. So out of that area, that's good, right? That's good. 713 would be the profit. Well, actually, it's up here because it's more money. It's 868 92 because that's just off that down on any rate check average. But you're actually getting 232 so you do profit calculator, and it shows you what it really is. All right. <clears throat> Joe says, uh, how many brokers will not work with the with new owner-operators? Oh, well, there's, there's quite a few, but there's a lot that will. So it's hard to give a number on that, right? You, you just got to call, ask them, right, when you book the load. They'll look up your MC number, and then they'll tell you, oh, well, you need six months or you need a year. Um, some say two years. Uh, but... Most of six months, there's a lot that will work with you when you're new. So you have no problem really um, finding freight. You might not have the best of freight, right, when you first start for that first six months. Um, but don't get discouraged. Put the time in, and then it gets a lot better after six months. And it gets a whole lot better after a year. $2,000 to go to New Avon, New York, out of Des Moines, Iowa, 222 it's below the average 16 cents. So let's get out of there and go over to the Windy City. Right, we're going to stop in Chicago. No deep dish pizza today. Nope, not going to do it. 15.57 on the loads. Um, we know there's more than two and a quarter, so we'll do this refresh. And we see the 6.58. We see $2,800 out of Tinley Park, Illinois. Going down to Louisiana, that's way above. That's $0.54 cents above. 2800 bucks. Going to Harahan, Louisiana. OTJB might have took that load. Maybe. Let's see what else we got. Four and a quarter. 400 274 274 270 $2,500 to Maryland. Let's see how far that's off or above. What do you guys think? It is below. 35 cents. I was going to say probably around $3 a mile to go over there to Maryland because one, depends on how you go, whether you have the tolls or not, right? And you got lots of uh, a mountain range there and certain things like that. You're going to have worse fuel mileage and it's going to be heavy. You know, I'd be asking, I'd be asking for all of that 35 cents back. Yes, indeed. Because we go here, we see there's 42, 40 in tolls, so there is a toll. And if you really wanted to see the route, Real quick, hit the PC miler, and you're going to see you're going to come across 70. And you're going to hit down through here and come across over here, and you got some, you know, toll stuff going on. But not much. Not much. <clears throat> and it's going to a not-so-good place in Maryland. 
1900, New Jersey. 1476, so back over to Pennsylvania. That's got to be a little light. That has to be light. It is. 25 cents. Right? A little light on that. And 255 in tolls. 255 in tolls. I don't like running the back roads in Louisiana. So um, these jokers have got to get back up way past that 1600 if you want me to um, haul that freight. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so we're going to get out of Chicago and we're going to slide on over to uh, Fremont. Ohio, home of Heinz, you know, Heinz Ketchup is there, right? Heinz is sitting over there. 1,350 loads out of Fremont. So, while we're sitting here looking at this $25 load, 300 bucks, 12 miles, you know, I'd do that load because you can also, you could find something else right after it. It's a good load for today. Pick it up, go deliver it, it's 5,000 pounds, and then get yourself the weekend load. That's how you pick up extra money, right? As you would, this is 18 minutes ago is when it was posted. But this is how you pick up extra money in the trucking game. Because if you want to run through the weekend, you're going to pick up Friday and go through Monday probably anyway. So you pick this load up, deliver it, same day, boom, go pick up your next load in the afternoon. Go to the truck stop, hang out, do whatever, and then hit the road Saturday, Sunday, deliver Monday somewhere else. And you picked up an extra 300 bucks, right? Here's 800 bucks, uh, Pennsylvania to Pennsylvania, interstate. That's a little light, 18 cents below. 353, 50, 287, Fremont to Cincinnati. That's going to be low too. Well, it's actually higher, 66 cents. I If I'm running... Short, I want $3 a mile. If I'm interstate, I want at least $3 a mile. Uh, so for me, I'd be asking for more money. If you say $3 a mile, you're 13 cents. You're only about $26 away. So I'd ask for six fifty, right? Right. Okay, I can start because you're done. Sorry, Rich, the Italian stallion. You know, you got to get up earlier than that. I've already started. Yeah, you're behind. You have to watch the replay. Um, so, we're sliding on down here some more. And uh, let's go to 11 and a quarter. Ohio to Pennsylvania. 258 a mile. It's four cents below the rate check of 262. It shows here 258. And it's 44,000. I'm going to want a whole lot more money on that because of the weight. You know, I'm going to want a whole lot more. If you want to call in, it's 810-207-5334. Uh, this is a broker probably. So let me answer this. Like trucking this, Jeff. They didn't want to say nothing. Maybe it was somebody calling in. 810-207-5334. Um, you know, you don't want to talk? That's okay. We just hit the dump button. Rich is over here laughing. Get out of bed, Rich. You know, trucking's already started. You're way behind. So is the show. All right. So we're getting ready to wrap it up here. You know, 30-minute uh, shows, right? So we'll do, uh, we'll get further over to the East Coast. We didn't do the East Coast yet, and then that'll be that. So if you want to call in, you only got about five more minutes, 810-207-5334, and uh, see if that number works, right? We're not going to put in Rich's Town that he likes us to put in just because. That's right, Snow Lord. You know, no one really wants to, to call because I'm intimidating. Um, yeah, you're right. Sorry. Uh, but if you want to learn, you know, if you want to learn something, it, it's free. You can call in, right? Right? 
Worked out. That's right. That's right, Rich. It worked out. Is that what it is? You got up and you went into the Planet Fitness and uh, did a little workout, got a shower. Uh, so that's another thing. If truck drivers really want to get in shape. Uh, Rich does it all the time, right? Here's Rich. Does it all the time. You could bobtail. You could leave your trailer and truck stop. Or a lot of Planet Fitnesses are in malls, and they'll allow you to park your, park your truck out in the parking lot. You go there, you go inside, you get a workout, 30 minutes, hour, whatever your workout regimen is. You get a free shower. They got showers there. You can take your shower. You don't have to do it in a truck stop. You take a shower. Some have tanning booths. Some, you know, all kind of stuff going on over there at Planet Fitness. And then, you know, get in your truck and enjoy the rest of the day. Right? Uh... Yeah, I'm so intimidating, Snorlord don't even call in. So, <laughs> so we will uh, stop in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And, of course, we don't know if that phone number is working because it didn't, it didn't work the other day. And then we finally got it working. And then I might just cancel that number out and get a different number um, and start that, right? All right, so here we go. We are in Philadelphia, Newark, New Jersey, to the Connecticut, MT Fuel Corp. Better have your eyes on this because I, you told me what you hauled another load for. There it is. There it is, baby. This, not, this ain't in the Brooklyn. You know, this isn't down in the Bronx. This is Newark, New Jersey, going up to Connecticut, 650-537. Kennexburg to New Jersey. PA to Staten Island, right? Yes, James G., Tan your left side. Bob, MT Fuel Corp, call the other number, 810-207-5334. Call the other number. He tried to call in, but on a different number. Somebody tried to call in, but on this other number. Um, we leave that number open. $1,690 out of Bridgeton, New Jersey, to Essex Junction, Vermont. Right? Six hundred dollars a week. That's actually you take that times four point three, 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 three. But we'll just say four point three for easier math. It's twenty five hundred eighty dollars. And if you do ten thousand miles in a month, that's seven hundred more dollars. So you're at around thirty two eighty, about thirty three hundred bucks. If you only do eight thousand miles, five sixty then you're going to be right around the $3,000 a month mark. Um, and you got to figure if that's, uh, you know, good for you or not, right? That's what you got to figure. So, you're, you're live on YouTube, uh, Empty Fuel Corp. Wow, well, I'm going to let the whole world know that that was an absolute pocket dial, and I'm sorry. Oh, are you picking up? Hey, there's a great load, better yeah. than the one that you had going to Connecticut. Tell you know, me about it. That I'm looking at. You know what I'm saying? Just saying. Tell me about it. Tell me, tell me, dispatcher. Tell me. Well, it's paying six hundred and fifty dollars, yeah. and and you don't have to go to the Bronx to get it. <laughs> yeah, because we got to add we got to add six hundred just to go to the Bronx. Guys, yeah. What it, what it, Where's it picking up? Oh, th this is down in Jersey, but uh, but here let, let's let's tell a quick story. So 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 Bob calls me last night and he's talking about this broker and this load, and it, it's the classic broker story. Yeah, I only got five hundred, and I can't do no more. And you hang up, and then the load they post the load higher a couple hours later because it's getting closer to the deadline. Oh, yeah. I only got. <laughs> Hold on, not even a couple hours. 45 minutes later, the, the girl raised the price 100 bucks. 100 bucks. She raised 100 bucks. And then, then what did you say, Bob? So she says, when I originally called on it, it was the load was perfect. It was picking up right where I was. It was going to right where I wanted to be, and I had a return load. It was perfect load. So, And I normally get you know between 7 and 8 to run that lane. It's only like 150 miles. So anyways, she's at 5. And I was like, really? I'm like, you know, can, can you come up? She says, that's all I got in it. And I'm like, come on, really? As a matter of fact, I said, I run that lane for other brokers, 
And I, uh, it's the same freight. She goes, yeah, that's why we got it, because we're cheaper. That's what she told me. So I said, I said, all right, have a good day. So now I'm like looking, and I'm like, 45 minutes later, she's back up to, she, she raises it to 600. So I call her back and tell her I need 750, and she says that's all she's got in it. And I'm like, well, you told me that when you were at five, and now you're at six. I mean, come on. <laughs> uh, but long story short, I needed to get up there because I had a load coming back already. So I took the six and you know took the hundred dollars on the chin. But in all in all, all miles were like I think it was like three ninety three a mile, all miles. So it was all right, not bad. Twenty four. It took me thirty hours. By the time I got up there, I had a ten hour reset, came back and delivered. It was like a thirty hour gig, and I think I cleared a grand. You cleared a grand? Yes. Yeah, that's miles. good. It, and the thing it is, she says, "Oh, I got to have all kinds of these, Bob. You know, and you, you need to you need to stay in contact with me. Well, you're gonna have to negotiate, right? Right? Hey, you know, the first one you do for cheaper, but you know, you want a you want a daily or dedicated guy you count on. It's gonna cost you a little money, right? And this is the thing. It's like, all right, so let's face it, six hundred was a was a tad bit on the lower side for that rate, right? Five hundred was like." That was like rude. That wasn't even close. I mean, it's not fair, you know. But um, seven, seven is okay. So if you could do seven up, seven down, and on that run, it's it's not bad, right? But my question is, so now if I accepted this load from this woman uh, for six, the next time the load comes 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 up, you know, she that's what she's probably going to want to pay me. And I'm like, I really wasn't happy with six hundred. I really wanted to be at seven, and I feel like. How in God's name can you get them up when you've already done it for six? You right, know? right, exactly. I don't, know. I don't know the answer. You maybe you know better, but I don't know the answer to that. I mean, jeez. Well, the answer is this. I would say, you know, I did you a favor at six hundred dollars. Right. I run that consistently for eight hundred dollars. You know, because I knew exactly where the place was, and you know, you're going to have to at least. Get to seven if you want me to do it because I I showed you I do a really good job. Got it there when I was supposed to get it there, right? I was there early, got there and picked up. You said, "Wow, you already picked up." I provide great service, and you know what? You're not going to have to worry about me. You know, if you give this to me for seven hundred or eight hundred dollars, it's no worry. You know that those are getting picked up and delivered, and you don't have to babysit. Well, that's totally true because that's exactly yeah. what happened. I mean, she for for six hundred bucks, I was my home base is out out about fifty five miles east of Manhattan, right? So that's where I was. I was fifty five miles east of Manhattan in my in my off home office, and she needed me to get this load picked up in an hour and a half in Brooklyn, and literally I got there in an hour and a half. I ran up to the yard, truck was ready to go. I got in there and I got loaded and I was north down on 95, no later than 320. They loaded me quick because I was probably one of the last loads of the day. So they got me in and out of there fast. It was some sort of, uh, it was a dry van run with this. It was Mason, Masonite for Home Depot. And, uh, and I ran it up. But I got the job done, like, perfectly, without a hitch. So you're right. That's Maybe that's how I'll try to sell it next time. Yes, that's how you got to sell it. You, you sell yourself. You sell the service, right? You right. say, yes, you could probably get another guy to haul it for $600. But you don't know them. You know me. You know that I've done it like this. On time, I picked up earlier than you thought. I was already loaded. And you're like, wow, you're already loaded. And I delivered it. You have no problems. You know it's going to get there. So it's service. I provide great service. And for that great service, I charge a little extra. So for a peace of mind, so you don't have to worry about your load, and you know your customer is going to get taken care of, just like you're my customer, I take care of you. So right. for that, is, I have a slighter, higher, you know, rate per mile. Now this might be a dumb question, but like, so do let's say let's say uh, a carrier picks a load up, you know, brokered load up, and then has an issue. Let's say the person's late or the truck breaks down or whatever. Does that fall back on the lap of the broker? Like, do they get the aggravation? Where does, like, so when I'm trying to sell myself on better service, like, where, it, is is that, do they even care? I mean, I'll tell you the truth, whenever I talk to these brokers, 
a lot of them seem like they could care less if the load gets moved. That's how it seems. Well, yeah. Well, it is for the ones that are getting them off load boards, right? Right. Right, but the ones that actually have their own, that's their own personal customer, it cares. They, they care. It matters. All right. So you got to find those better brokers. Yes, you got to find them. That's right. And when you do, they find you. You do a really good job. They remember. They call you. I get calls all day long from different brokers saying, hey, you have trucks in this area. Why? Because they know the guys get the job done. They don't have to worry about it. They don't have to babysit them. But they know that if they call, like trucking contractors, they're going to have to pay a little more than if it was somebody else. Right. But they know they're going to get but that I, service. I feel like, I mean, I, I understand what you're saying. They, they might have to pay a little more. But honestly, I mean, up in my area where I'm running, I mean, just to give you an example, I had $75 in tolls on this run. So, and that that was, if I, and that's only because I didn't cross the Hudson River. If I were to cross the Hudson River, you could add another $95 on top of that, right? So, so I feel like, you know, around here, you have to be, you know, the higher insurance rates, the just, I mean, just a rental spot to park the truck. The, everything's a little bit more money over in this area. So you, for me personally, I, I don't even think 700 is like paying too much. Like, I feel like at three, at three, over 350 a mile is kind of like where you need to be around here. Well, yeah, you got to be there because the, the tolls are so expensive. It's the tolls. It, it's I mean, high dollar to run there, right? It is. And they, they know it, right? But they just try to weasel out of it, I think. Right. So while you're talking, I was doing a load planner. So for okay. all, all the guys watching and they've seen all the buttons clicking, I did a load plan from uh, New Jersey for next week, coming back to New Jersey, right? So we did a five loads, five days. 1188 miles, 3657 in the gross revenue, 520 in fuel, 149 tolls. You would net 2988 for the Monday through Friday on this scenario if you picked those same loads. And that's without getting more money. That's just taking the posted rate. Wow. Not Pretty bad, good. right? Not bad. No, it's real good. Not bad. Hold on one second. You've added up. Oh, that's over $3 a mile. For gross, right? It's all over three dollars a mile, right? Um, so there you are. There's the tolls right up there. Yo, pigtail, what's happening? Uh, James, what's going on? Cruising the road. Uh, so there you go. And you could say, well, I didn't want this one. You could click that one off, and it's twenty seven eighty nine. You could do search results and pick one of these other ones. Um, or you can say, you know what, I'm going to take this last one off. Let's see if we can get better than the 2988. We hit search results. We come back here and say, okay, well, what if I go to Bridgeport, New Jersey for this load? Or I go here for 10 loads and I click on it. And then these 10 loads will come up, right? And there's no other loads there. So... I can say, well, I'm not going to do that. So I go back here, I click off of that, and then I come back to the search results, and I say, okay, well, I'm going to go to Lumberton, New Jersey. I'm going to click on that one. And then you say, I'm going to go here. I'm going to do this load. And then... Then we come to the planner, and there's still a couple here, and you say, okay, I can finish it out to extra money and finish the leg out, and that's a six leg. So then if you look at the planner, you're at 3,076. You got six loads in five days, 3,750 on the money, 151 in total. So you, you, did it, you did increase a little bit by about 30 bucks, but is it really worth that six load for 30 bucks? I don't think so. What do you think, Bob? Uh, no, nah. I don't think so, Jeff. Nah. <laughs> nah. Well, I mean, actually, I mean, actually, it's about, actually, it's about $90 or so, but it's not worth it. Nah, I feel like, I mean, look, you used to talk about a while back, you know, just running the short game. I kind of like that, you know. That, uh, I, it's hard, like, you know, 
it's hard to figure out. Like, you know, it's, you get you seem to get less money per mile to run further distances. So then it almost you almost have to get back to your uh, your per day thing. You know what you need per day. But when you're running like the short game, it's different. Your your price per mile goes up a lot more, and I feel like you almost. You don't even have to worry about your cost per day because it's really you get a high rate per mile. I just like right. the short game. I, that's me anyway. I don't know. I, maybe I'm still figuring it out. I, I've only been doing this for you know what is it eight months now? Nine months. Right. I mean, I know oh. my numbers, but I'm it, still meandering through the smoke, so to be you know, so to speak. Any recommendations on insurance for a three-year lease onto a company? And he says, "What well, OIDA insurance and stuff like that." Well. I would probably go to First Guard before I went to OIDA, personal opinion. I would check First Guard insurance out. This is one ST Guard. You see a little bulldog, you know you're at the right place. Um, they were a Michigan company. They're down in Florida now. Um, they will, if you have three years' uh, experience, they're your, probably your best bet for the insurance. For What did you say? You had to have a three years for the authority? No, no, three years. No, it's just... For insurance, uh, for physical damage, because he's leased on to a company. Um, oh, okay. I would go first guard before I went OIDA. Personal personal preference. Right. That's the insurance that we have that I have with uh, for my authority. Right. That's the same thing that you're talking about. Who do you have for your authority? I have Progressive. And okay. You're killing me. Well, yeah, I mean, you could check Progressive. That's another one. But, yes, Progressive is expensive. They're expensive. It was like, they, they you know, it, the, the whole process was smooth, and I was excited because they signed me right up, no problem. And I don't have any accidents, and I don't have any tickets, knock wood. But they signed me up really quick, but the rate was is, like, stupid. It's, like, 19000 Right. James G. has, has First Guard. A, a, a few of our contractors have used First Guard insurance. James G, you, you happy with First Guard? They're they're reasonable priced, right? They're pretty inexpensive. Um, just don't get a claim, right? If you have a claim, then they're gonna you know jack the rates up. But as long as you don't have that claim, you know they're and all insurance is gonna jack it up anyway, right? If something happens, so I'm gonna what I'm gonna do now is I actually I got three quarters of my if is due today, right? So um uh. I got three quarters of if that I'm sending over to Progressive um, to show them that, like, because they, they've got me in some policy that, like, has me running, like, cross country, and I really don't do that. I stay, like, right around here, you know, like, three, four hundred, four hundred miles radius. So I'm going to try to show them that, you know, like, I don't travel as many miles and see if they can do the right thing and lower it a little bit because it's too high. Yeah, it's expensive, right? Yeah, I mean, I think yeah. it should be four or five thousand dollars cheaper per year. That's what I think. I mean, I know other people that have insurance, and that's what they're paying—fifteen grand, twelve grand. Right. And like I said, I don't have any tickets. I don't have any accidents. I mean, I know a guy. <laughs> I know a guy that's paying four thousand dollars a year less than me, and he hit a he hit an overpass with his with his trailer. I don't, know, and he got a ticket for it. Really? Yeah. And he's paying cheaper than me, so what does that tell you? I'm getting, I'm getting shaft. Yeah, well, I believe it. I believe it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. Insurance is a, it. It's a hard game in trucking. In, insurance can make or break you in the trucking industry, right? Yeah. Yeah, it can make or break you. Well, when I look at my expenses, the number one expense is insurance, and the next the next expense, in my case, is diesel fuel. Right. I think well, that's where I have. But I don't run like what a lot of guys on your channel run. You know, like I'm not – I would assume if I was running – if I was going out and staying out, you know, a couple of weeks at a time and coming back, maybe my diesel would be higher. But the way I run my insurance – I spend less money in diesel than I do in insurance. Well, di well, diesel fuel is the highest price. It's it's the highest factor in trucking, right? When you when you do your profit and loss, diesel is always the highest. That's your highest expense. 
but is diesel. Which, by the way, I mean, I don't know if everybody's been paying attention, but diesel fuel is going to be on its way down quickly. I, I, <clears> I have it's, my diesel fuel pricing at the terminal has dropped twenty cents a gallon inside of the last week, so that should help help guys uh, filling their trucks. Because you know, if you get six miles a gallon and you do one hundred twenty thousand miles a year, you got twenty thousand gallons of diesel. And if your average is two fifty, that's fifty grand, right? And if you have a new yeah. truck at three thousand dollars, that's only thirty six thousand. Diesel outweighs anything when it comes to uh, your operation. It's the most expensive part of trucking is diesel. Your fuel cost. That's right. why. That's why it's the most important to work on to get it to the the best fuel mileage you can because that's your cost. You know what? Now that I think about it, I didn't run a full year. That's why my diesel fuel pricing is uh, less than my insurance. Right. That's the reason. If you, if you give me, I think I only calculated that on whatever it is, eight months. Right. So it was, and it's pretty close. So what will happen is if I, you know, as, as I start to run 12 months, uh, yeah, you're right. My diesel costs will end up surpassing my insurance costs. Right. Because if you go, sure. right, so if you go... 120,000 miles is a six mile gallon truck. That's 20,000 gallons of diesel. If you got eight mile gallon truck, that's 15,000. There's a 5,000 gallon difference. And if the average was 200, you know, $2.50, that's $12,500 more money. The guy driving the six mile gallon truck is spinning it out of his pocket than the guy driving the eight mile gallon truck. So the guy driving the eight mile gallon truck is going to have $12,500 in his pocket at the end of the year net above the guy driving a six mile per gallon truck oh my truck gets you know and if you have five miles per gallon you know you're in trouble I'm at. okay so uh, five miles again five so, point five five point two so bob's at five so you know <laughs> bob would have to um basically buy twenty four thousand gallons of fuel if he did one hundred twenty thousand, <laughs> and the guy that get eight gallons is at 15 so you can look at it. There's nine thousand gallon difference, which would be what twenty three five. So the guy with the eight mile gallon truck would be twenty three thousand five hundred dollars more in his pocket than Bob. Than Bob, but but <laughs> but, okay, but you got listen. I'm not arguing with you. But you got to look at the total picture. I don't have a payment on my truck. I'm not paying any insurance on it. Uh, as far I mean, interest on it. So I'm saving money there, and uh, it was it is my first tractor. So I understand that but, I probably need down the road need to get something a little bit more uh, economical. We got them in the 